Hello fellow minions of technology, my name is Tim Lee, welcome to Legacy Studio. Today it's time to take a look at some of the pictures we took on our last trip. As some of you may know, we've been doing a series of trips. We have 8 to 10 trips we want to take in the year 2019. We've already done two, both of them snowboarding trips, more like snow falling trips. Falling and trip, that is very redundant. Snow trip, tripping in the snow. So anyway, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that when I go out to each one of these trips, I take a series of pictures that I hope to bring home, print them out on my big printer, and have some nice pretty prints that I can take into work and hang up. And if for some crazy reason you guys absolutely love them, you can actually buy them. So what I think we're going to do is hop on into Lightroom here, have a quick breeze through some of the pictures that I have here, and then see if we can edit up one or two of them. But first, let's browse through, see if we see anything interesting, and maybe you will find something interesting that I find interesting, and then we're going to just get along together and be friends forever. Let's just make things awkward while we're at it. Why not? Okay, now this is something I found very interesting, a really cool little shot um, of just a little sled just out in the middle of the snow. Now there's tons of stuff all around this thing, but I had an idea for a bit of a minimalist shot on this. I guess it'd be kind of hard to explain what my goal is. My goal is is just to single out this sled, much like this picture here, but clean it up a little bit and make it look like it's just white on a white backdrop. Very much like this, but with a little bit of a change to it. Uh, we'll get there when we get there. All right, this is a rather interesting shot. I like it, but I don't like it. I feel like it's almost... There's a leading line going out and there's nothing that it's digging for. So I don't really care for it so much. So once again, like the leading line, don't like how it suddenly just drops off the edge. Uh, this one's interesting, but it really isn't. It feels like a snapshot. So does that one. Kind of like that. All right, so now I want to take a look at this picture. I had a whole idea for this one, very minimalist kind of a look, uh, and I want to give it a shot and see what happens. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do is I just want this to sit in a rule of thirds on the bottom left corner, and I want everything else to be pure white. I want it to look like it's a, a sled in just an absolute pure whiteout blizzard. That's my thought. So what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and turn on my, my whites here so when i exaggerate the white form i want it to show me how much it's blowing out those whites now of course there are whites on the sled itself so i need to be really careful how much i mess with this but for the most part i just want to take this down until we get to about here because i do want there to be shadows from the sled in the snow and uh, by doing this, I'm getting that effect. So now we know that everything on the outside is pure white, and then everything in this area can be roughly adjusted. So now let's go ahead and mess with it a little bit and see if we can't get the sled to stand out just a little bit more, and then maybe take it into Photoshop and do a little extra enhancement. I'm gonna bring up the clarity just a tiny bit. The issue with clarity is the more you bring it up, the more it brings out darker tones. So things like reds and such become darker and not more saturated. I want that red by the time I'm done with this to be bold, you know, and right now on both of my screens, it just looks bland. <laughs> the opposite of what I'm looking for, obviously. Brought down the whites just slightly. I feel like that'll help it a little bit. And putting a little bit more black into this is really helping that red wood come out. And then I can probably bring up the exposure just a little. And there we go. Now we're getting more of what I'm looking for. So the reason I brought this over here into Photoshop is because I want to be able to expand the canvas just a little bit um, and just do some very minimal minimal editing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my background to white here real quick, to pure white. And I'm going to make a new layer. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of cropping. Nice thing about the crop tool in uh, Photoshop when it behaves <laughs> is that it provides you with a rule of thirds. And my main goal here is to have a small sled tucked off to the side of this just pure white area. I feel like this could be like a fun little Christmas card kind of a look thing. Um, but my goal is just to be incredibly minimalist with this piece. So the only way to really help that is to do something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my paint bucket. I'm gonna select this color right here and we'll go ahead and color this and see what it does. At this moment in time, not much. 
And this is probably because I've expanded it and then what's behind it is that. So if I erase from this layer here, that color should show up. There we go. Okay. There we are. And there we go. That's that's kind of what I was leaning towards. I think that feels pretty good. Um, my, I don't like screens. I don't. I'm, I'm actually using a TV screen here. It's not calibrated. None of my screens are calibrated. I can't afford a calibrator, which I want to get. Uh, if anyone wants to send me a calibrator to review, in exchange to letting me keep it, I'll be happy to review it, though I do do unbiased reviews, just to warn you. I really like this one because I like the wood. I love how in focus that wood is. It feels very sharp. So what I'm thinking, and that's perfectly on the rule of thirds, which I was thinking it was off, but that is perfectly on the rule of thirds. Ooh, look what that clarity's doing. It's making that pop really nice. I feel like that's kind of interesting. Just a tiny vignette for no other reason than just to add the vignette. Well, guys, there are certain days where you can realize pretty quickly that you've had a burner day where all the photos that you've taken have probably just not met the demands of what you personally were wanting. So I think what I am going to do at least is I'm going to print two pictures. The paper we're going to use today to print this up is obviously suggested by Tom Cruise, which is the Premium Plus photo paper uh, that I just got from Staples because when I first got the printer, I bought a whole bunch of paper just to try some different stuff. So we're going to try this stuff uh, for these two prints. Man, that turned out so much better on here than it did on the computer. Uh, once again, like I said, I don't have any way to uh, calibrate my computer monitors or my printer, and that's something that I'm trying to get figured out before I review my beautiful Canon 100 printer, Pro 100, but look at this. That is a beautiful image. That is so cool. And it's simple, but that's the whole idea. Sim simple is beautiful, and, and just something like this is just so unique. I don't see any kind of marking of where I erased. I think that that is, in its simplicity, an absolutely beautiful image. I love that. So I'm going to take that to the office, and I'm proudly going to put that up. Uh, if anyone wants this image, uh, I will provide... Uh, well, let me know. Put it in the description that you want it, uh, and if you do, then I'll go through the processes of making it something that you can buy. But at this point in time, uh, this is this is an absolutely beautiful print. I know it seems simple, a little too simple, but that's what I love about it. It's simply beautiful, you know? It doesn't take much to make something pretty. So let me go put this to the side, and then uh, let's try and print the other one. All right, in image number two, I, I don't know. I'll show it to you, but I don't know. I'm also not exactly liking the background. I think with all the saturation that I did to this piece here, it's doing something to the colors in the backdrop that I'm not quite a fan of. Um, and you can't really tell. I don't know if I can get this close enough to the camera and the camera gets focus on it. But it just doesn't, it, it feels like it's doing some kind of weird texturing uh, in that backdrop. And it's causing a lot of color particles to be put in there. I kind of like it. I also feel it might be slightly underexposed. But I'm having a hard time picking on this one. So yeah, that's the other image. And uh, beggars can't really be choosers when you don't spend an awful lot of time just shooting random pictures. It's not really it's not really that good in my opinion i feel like it could be better
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. It's time to take a look at what comments have come in. There have been quite a few actually, uh, and I'm going to try and read you just a couple. Uh, if I've missed your comments, I apologize, but uh, I do appreciate you guys leaving comments down below. It does help out a lot. Uh, so I did a video on the GVM Easily app, how you plug in the GVM Easily app into your light and how that works. Uh, and uh, we had someone say, unfortunately, uh, this is from Nayul, I guess. He says, unfortunately, it does not work. Even if I use the suggested password, I do not see the GVM's LED Wi-Fi spot. Uh, this gentleman apparently has a 480 LS, and after talking with him, several pieces, you can go and see the full conversation. Uh, apparently, that there there are some 480 LSs that do not have Wi-Fi. So look on the back of your 480 LS if you're using a GVM uh, light panel and see if there's a Wi-Fi reset button. If it's not there, you may not have the capability of using Wi-Fi. Got another comment here uh, from uh, my Bell & Howell 22 millimeter uh, lens review and uh, someone says that well their name is hey that's gang related and they say you have nice eyelashes. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. This is Lul. Uh, sorry if I said your name wrong. They said, dumb question maybe, but does the cage fit with the A6000? This is the review that we did for the Sony A6300 cage uh, for small rig, and I told them uh, that yes, it should. Uh, I've used my uh, A6300 cage on my A6000, and it was good. Um, we had a little bit of conversation back and forward, and he also verified that it works perfectly fine for him as well. Someone on another video here, uh, Strelock Noise, uh, says, uh, before I buy an overpriced adapter, I'd like to know if it works with sampling apps like Field Scraper and Sampler. Uh, and this is my video for the Connect Zoom H2N verse to iPad um, and showing that it actually does work. Um, and uh, so we'll see if maybe we can do some tests and see if uh, we can figure out if the Zoom H2N will work in that way with those apps. That'd be a good, a good video to consider doing. Anyway, there's a whole bunch more comments other than that. So as we go through future videos, we'll try to remember to hop back in here and keep reading comments as we can leave your comments down below so i can read them in the future thank you so much for watching today's show sorry if it went a little long i'll try and do as much editing as i can god bless you guys we'll see you next time right here on legacy studio and uh, thanks for printing out some pictures with me hope it helped you in some way or another if you have any questions just leave it down below any advice i'll take that too leave it down below have a great day bye